Welcome to Holly Sniper EFI Training Part 23. This training module, we're going to take a look at working with our advanced tuning functionality found within our Sniper software. Without further wait, let's jump in and check out working with this advanced tuning. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our advanced tuning functionality found within our Holly Sniper EFI systems. Our advanced tuning functionality unlocks a lot of advanced programming strategies and functionality that otherwise is hidden and it will be a higher level of tuning that you can accomplish with your sniper. Now, you may not need to access this information, but if you want to go and work with some advanced programming, you might have a unique situation where you need to offset maybe fuel or spark timing or maybe idle RPM. You can do this using this advanced programming functionality and it'll give you more ability to program certain conditions over and beyond what the normal ICFs here will account for. So let's jump in and take a look at turning on our advanced tuning and then talking about some of our strategies and what we can accomplish using it. So let's go up here to our toolbox and we're going to first go to enable advanced. Now here it's going to come up with a warning. This is going to be telling you that we're going into advanced programming and it can definitely be detrimental to your engines uh, running if you don't have it programmed properly. We're going to go through and make sure that you don't do anything that's not going to be good for the engine. So we'll click OK here and we'll skip that. Now we're going to go into the advanced config to import. We'll say yes right here and go ahead and select the blank option and that it brings in the ICF for the advanced programming. Now in here we find two different options for programming, a 1D or 2D table. A 1D table factors in one parameter, so in this case this would be TPS because it's selected here, for the table to be based on a correction. A 2D table is going to be probably exactly what you'd think two variables that we can account for in this table. Now normally we would call this a three-dimensional table or this would be called a two-dimensional table for most standalone systems, but Holly has chosen to call this one-dimensional or two-dimensional. Either way, let's jump in here and take a look first at a one-dimensional table and how this is going to work. So first thing in our table one right here, so we have four total tables that we can use for four different correction factors. And our table one, if we go to enable table, this turns on the table option to program we find over here we have a name. The first option I'm going to show you here is going to be using a table type based around a multiplier in our injector pulse width. And we're going to be offsetting our injector pulse width based on running ethanol. So I'm going to be assuming I'm running E85 in my fuel system. Now we have no way to normally compensate for running E85 in our fuel ICF here for any of our programming values. If we're running ethanol fuel, so this table would be assuming we're running petrol fuel, if we're running ethanol fuel, we need to increase our fuel flow to the engine about 33 to 34%. That will allow the engine to run at the same air fuel and make the same power output compared to petrol fuel. So we need a lot more fuel flow into the engine. We can, in we can increase the fuel flow rather than absorbing it into the VE table here and making these values artificially high. We can go into our 1D table here and actually set this as a multiplier and use this as a simple background multiplier to account for running E85. This is not assuming you're running flex fuel, have a flex fuel sensor. We're going to have a dedicated tutorial talking about flex fuel control using this advanced programming functionality. This is just going to be covering how to deal with if you're running ethanol. So first thing I'm going to do here is go into the name and give it a custom name. I'm going to call this ethanol, we actually go E85 fuel comp. So we know this is a fuel comp for E85 fuel. And then we're going to go in here to the table type and we are going to set this to a multiplier. So fuel flow multiplier. This is going to be multiplying whatever the injector pulse width is being calculated coming from our fuel table, target air fuel, and our conversion from fuel mass into injector pulse width. Knowing all the injector data, we get an injector pulse width. It'll multiply that pulse width based on what we're programming here in the table. So this suggests is going to act like a overall fuel multiplier, you could say. We don't have an overall fuel multiplier in the software, so we're going to create one right now. So we're using this option here, fuel flow multiplier. Now we do have some additional things that we could work with in terms of offsets for our fuel. So we have a fuel flow offset. We have a VE-based fuel flow offset. If we're talking about fuel flow offsets here, this will allow us to edit the values that we offset in terms of a pound per hour fuel. So we could either add or subtract fuel based on what we program here. The VE-based fuel flow offset allows us to put VE values that we would add or subtract against our VE value table. The fuel flow multiplier is the easiest because it just simply multiplies that pulse width. It gives a percentage of increase. That's the easiest way to deal with this. These would be the normal 
offsets that we would find in here. Um, we Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.